Yes. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Wen, for helping with my project. Uh, could I um, get you to say a little bit about yourself? Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm happy and very uh, privileged to be here with you today. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> my name is Huang. Yeah, my full name is Nguyen Thị Thu Huang. Yeah, I'm a teacher in a government university in the northern part of Vietnam. And I have been teaching marketing and economics for more than 16 years. Yeah, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you too. So you teach economics? Yes. Okay. You you're right. Uh, do you, is there a part on the economics that you focus on, like uh, labor or um, monetary policy or uh, inflation? Is there uh, a... agricultural economics? Agriculture. Okay. Um, I guess uh, Vietnam um, sells a lot of uh, rice. Is that like? Yes, that's uh, our strength. Yeah. Uh, agricultural you know... production. I've always seen uh, rice uh, patties, you know, flooded with water. And I learned something very interesting the other day that um, rice doesn't actually need to be flooded, that, but it's a way to keep the weeds down. Is that true? Right. right. We have that kind of, uh, uh, one kind of rice, very uh, different rice. And uh, we also um, can create some variety of rice uh, to adapt with the new situation, like uh, when... Uh, Flooding the uh, right can grow, growing, growing, can grow. Yeah. Keep growing. That, that is uh, really neat. Oh, and I was at our local uh, supermarket in, um, here in Houston, Texas, and I saw that we have fish that actually comes from Vietnam. Yeah, right. So mm. it's, it's uh, really amazing. People all over the world uh, uh, get the, the agricultural products. Uh, that yes. uh, is made there. Yes, right. That's um, very amazing because uh, Vietnam has uh, that great strength to produce agricultural products. And during the pandemic situation, we are very successful uh, with uh, EVFTA. Um, I mean, uh, we have some agreements, uh, free trade agreement with um, European countries to uh, export uh, some agricultural products with very high quality. And what got you into economics? Uh, why did you uh, decide to study economics? <laughs> to be honest with you, because my parents, they are businessmen. So mm, I got uh, inspired from them. <laughs> and I got very interested in doing business and our economy when I was just five or six years old and I had a dream to become a business woman and also economics teacher. <laughs> so finally I got my dream and uh, to become a teacher here is uh, that very challenging for me. <laughs> but right now, yeah, after 16 years teaching, uh, I feel very happy and like a uh, blissful uh, when uh, I can uh, spread my knowledge and I can share my experience, my interesting story to my students to help them have a, a better life. Um, and how come you didn't become a businesswoman? Oh, that's very interesting, you know, uh, to apply my um, knowledge into the real life. So um, I really, I'm really excited uh, to do business even domestic um, business and international business because uh, I um, finished my PhD in 2015. I mean, uh, five years ago. And then in 2018, I got scholarship to study in India about international trade, international business. So yeah, from that, I got some experience to do uh, my own business. I mean, I have an own shop. Uh, it's very small, but my um, uh, success in, in life. That's, uh, that's uh, so you ran your own shop? Yeah, I opened my own shop with um, selling purified water machine. Yeah, you know. Oh, water uh, purification own... machine. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> uh, so, like for tap water or for some industrial purpose, or um... uh, that's uh, for consuming uh, consuming for households uh, with twenty um, uh, liters, or you can use for the factory with one hundred forty five uh, water uh, a day. I was uh, thinking that uh, you know water recycling is so important. Uh, you know, here in the U.S. Um, we use water one time and it goes through these huge cycles where um, you know the, the rain falls it goes into lakes we get it we purify it we send it to homes it's used precisely for one purpose goes into the drain goes out into the rivers goes out into the oceans and then repeats the whole process but you know if we could just make the water kind of recycle with inside of each of those uses it'd be so much better yeah yeah you're right. You're right. Uh, you know, here a lot of um, pollution and some kind of industry. So that's why it's very useful and helpful for people here. And we also add some mineral and other kind of vitamins uh, to the water. So that's why it's very nice to improve our standard of living, uh, to approach with uh, nice, uh, water resources. Now. Uh, you mentioned that agriculture is a big strength for Vietnam. You're right. Uh, but uh, do you think uh, Vietnam is uh, developing as best it can? Or do you see some like factors that are kind of helping or causing Vietnam to, to uh, kind of hold back? Like, if, if the, in order, I mean, what's your thoughts? <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for providing me that question. That's very interesting question and big uh, lesson. Yeah, big question for all policymakers and Vietnamese uh, people here. <laughs> because uh, to be honest with you, that's a kind of um, challenge for us to develop uh, agriculture. Because here, the more you um, produce agriculture products, the more you are poor. So the, the poorer you are. So that's why that's, uh, we are wondering that uh, um, What's kind, what direction we should move or what uh, policy we should uh, uh, release to improve and to push that kind of sector? Uh, because uh, uh, pollution and applying high technologies into real life, into the uh, production and that kind of system for us. And also we want to um, like uh, meet the high need or the high quality of products. So that's why that's very challenging for us. Uh, but I do believe that when uh, we have good support from other country with a big um, enterprise, they will uh, bring high technology to uh, improve our agricultural system. Yeah, you know, here, um, like aquaponics is becoming more popular, uh, you know, combining um, Agri hydroponics with um, you know uh, aquaculture to like uh, create these systems where the fish are producing the nutrients for the um, the plants and I, I think I, I heard that like in Vietnam um, you you kind of also do this out in the field where you put uh, fish inside the rice patties right yeah right even stream you know even stream we put it and combine we with them uh, I mean that's uh, like a system. Uh, they support each other as well. Mm, and also, we really want to produce uh, agriculture with uh, organically and friendly with our environment. Yeah, it's uh, sustainability is such a, a big yeah. consideration now. Um, right. You know, it's not an endless uh, supply of agricultural land and uh, materials. You got to figure out some way to close the loop. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Can I ask you uh, uh, another question, uh, probably a more personal question? Um, yes, of your, your English is amazing. I um, had a lot of uh, Vietnamese friends who grew up here in, in Texas with me, um, who I found to be more difficult to understand. Uh, and I find you so easy to understand. I, Thank how you. Did you. How did you get so good at English? Well, to be honest with you, 
Uh, thank you so very much for your encouragement. <laughs> yeah, you make my day. So I have a uh, run. I have a run a lot of uh, Zoom meeting like you. Uh, you are doing it right now, and I'm helping people improve it, improve their English. And also, I have so many friends and wonderful friends like you to be next to me and help me on the daily basis. That's why, yeah, my English keep improving. Thank you very much. Well, th thank you very much. Uh, I, so you speak um, Vietnamese, English. Uh, do you know some other languages too? Uh, I'm learning Chinese. Ni hao. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all I know. <laughs> there, we have a, a joke um, here in the U.S. Uh, that's kind of funny. Um, do you know what you call somebody that knows three languages? Uh, trilingual. Yeah, uh, so, trilingual. And then somebody that knows two languages, you call them bilingual. bilingual. And do you yeah. know what Mono. you call somebody that knows one language? Monolingual. Um, American. American. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're we're not so good with our languages over here. So I... Oh no, I don't think so. <laughs> you are so great. You know, I have a, uh, I have known my friend. Uh, he can speak five languages. So very amazing. And he from Montana. Montana. Yeah. Ah. So, yeah. So you know, I'm very happy and like uh, something. My privilege in my life when I have many special guests and like a special gift for my life when I have a you and other friends. They are very friendly and very sweet. So they are ready and available to help me. Oh, how much I can give and I can say to them. So <laughs> that's amazing. Um, but you know, another kind of um, a trend that we see in the U.S. in terms of agriculture is uh, more and more having controlled environments where you're actually growing like lettuce and vegetables and stuff inside of buildings where the temperature and humidity and lighting and everything is controlled and, mm. you know, turning agriculture more into a, a kind of a, a repeatable factory process that can happen anytime regardless of what the weather is or the rain or anything like that. I was wondering if you've seen some developments like this in Vietnam uh, agriculture as well. Mm, all right. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, you remind me and let me recall about my, uh, my country and that kind of system here. We can put some like a chip, you know, some chip on the tree. Uh, I mean, lychee. We put a chip and something to control and to manage uh, some factor to impact, but not totally here. Uh, we still let it outside with a normal climate. So everything has to sign, you know. Uh, if uh, in a developed country, like a your country, you can apply with high technology into your production. But here um, we still have some kind of um, natural uh, factors impact on that. So that's some kind of disadvantage. So we have to do something to reduce risk when uh, applying some kind of uh, technology because uh, it can, we have to match between uh, human being knowledge with uh, the system, how to manage, how to use this uh, effectively. Yeah, so that's a problem. We have to balance uh, between uh, cost and like uh, output revenue. We have to, uh, so that's a big uh, lesson for us. Yeah, it's, uh... It's and it's a constantly changing uh, type of, of environment too. Yeah, yeah. So in addition to um, uh, rice, uh, shrimp, and fish, what are other big agricultural products that Vietnam produces? Yeah, here we, uh, we have a lot of kind of fruits uh, to export to other country like uh, European country. Uh, we have lychee. You can see lychee, very famous and very high quality. Uh, and I have seen that uh, 
uh, foreigners and uh, imposters, uh, they really like that kind of fruits in my country. Even mango, even pomelo. Yeah, so we are exporting uh, fruits to other country with very like a high requirement, very high quality. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny whenever I think about all the pictures that I've seen in uh, Vietnam, the only ones that come to mind are like, um, you know, uh, tending rice paddies. I like, I, I don't think, I don't think um, I've been exposed to like the full variety of I kind of uh, the situation of Vietnam. You know, it's a lack of uh, education for me. Oh my God. I also can gain a lot of knowledge and experience from you. Uh, right now I can compare, <laughs> I can compare something from there and here. And you know, Vietnam, we are very friendly and we are uh, opening our hands, our economy uh, to make friends with uh, every single country all around the world to boost our economy, to improve the standard of living for my country as well. And also we want to have uh, more people around the world. You know, during the COVID-19, we, uh, we are supporting even the country, USA. Yeah, so that's like a titan uh, that kind of we can tighten our friendship and we can transfer messages for humanity as well. That's a uh, very happy and meaningful in our life. Yes, um, there's definitely lots of opportunities for us to uh, help uh, one another as individuals and as countries and as cultures and to also kind of enrich and learn uh, from each other too. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, knowledge is like a uh, mutual, mutual understanding, mutual uh, supporting. Absolutely. Now you mentioned that you're learning Chinese, um, mm -hmm. and I imagine you know China is becoming such a, a big economic, uh, social, uh, political, military power. <laughs> um, how much? Uh, how much? I mean. Uh, of that do you see in uh, businesses in the environment in, in Vietnam? Oh, <laughs> that's very interesting. You know, uh, Chinese is my neighbor. And also um, that's, uh, we have some Chinese teacher here and they are teaching and helping us uh, to study Chinese. I mean, here in my university, we have around 10,000 students and with variety of major, um, to be honest with you, yeah, uh, we have to realize uh, that China will become very uh, giant country and economy uh, in the world. Uh, but for us, that's, um, we are building very good friendship with uh, other, every single country, I mean, not uh, exception. And um, from that, uh, we want to collaborate with them to uh, boost our economy. I mean, uh, to improve and develop our country. And we have to consider uh, which one we can uh, cooperate with each other. And also we can reduce risk and minimize some other kind of conflict we don't want. And of course, uh, we don't want to, uh, to be in any trouble. And you can say we want to keep our nose clean. <laughs> I understand. Um, and, you know, it's uh, an interesting thing. I, I heard a, a few years back uh, a, a, st a story on the radio about how some manufacturing people who have been moving to China because the labor rates were so uh, low actually have started moving their factories to nearby countries like Vietnam. I was wondering if you've seen some of this happen also with uh, uh, manufacturers moving to uh, Vietnam. Yeah, that's so interesting movement and interesting ob observation from you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have seen that uh, even other country like uh, India and uh, other country as well. I have seen that 
because of uh, they explain about uh, uh, global chain <clears throat> global chain so we want they want to reduce risk and something like uh, because of pandemic they have an object and experience about that and they have to consider and they have to think about some factor like uh, input and something um, convenient uh, or suitable for them uh, to uh, to open and to locate their factories and how to uh, smooth and how to moderate uh, their production with high productivity and i realized that they um, they are selecting vietnam as a good location and destination for them and hopefully we can create more convenient factors and something uh, better for them uh, to uh, to encourage them uh, to um, <laughs> come to us and that's very amazing and that's a great opportunity for us when we have more uh, international cooperation here uh, our country can have other uh, chance to improve um, many things even knowledge even experience even technology yeah thank you I had a couple so uh, of questions I wanted to ask you also. Um, let's see, uh, NASA, the American Space Agency, is planning to send people back to the moon in 2024. And that's sort of the context that I was planning to uh, do these interviews with, was to go out and find out, uh, do people know about it? What do they think about it? And are they would they uh, take an opportunity to go to space if they could? So um, with that, um, did you had you heard uh, that NASA was planning to send people back to the moon? Oh, that's amazing! I have heard that news as well. And uh, to be honest, uh, with you researching about space and investment, uh, investing money on that, even my country also we are uh, having some money uh, on that field, and that's very amazing because that's like a potential field for us. Uh, and I really is uh, excited and in interested in some kind of um, fuel, and uh, hopefully that's going to be like a uh, very um, good opportunity and uh, like uh, uh, help us to understand more about our universe. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that uh, Vietnam uh, has some investments uh, in space industries. I'm yes. not familiar with this. Uh, could you share oh. some of that with me? Yes, in my country, um, we are investing some money on like uh, some orbit uh, about, um, uh, we put some, uh, how can I say, very specific in term uh, to put that, uh, uh, to satellite. know about climate and weather. Yeah, because in the past, I mean, uh, 15 or 20 years back, um, the climate i mean um, uh, weather for uh, forecast here very weak and the information i mean the information they were providing is not correct because um, the low uh, the low knowledge about uh, uh, climate and weather uh, prediction so that's why uh, we we have to focus on uh, explore i mean space um, research so um, when we can put that uh, orbit in uh, the space, uh, we can know better about our weather, our climate. So from that, uh, right now, because you know, Vietnam is an agriculture, an agricultural uh, country. So that's why uh, when we have good prediction about weather, we can control and we can reduce risk when uh, uh, producing uh, agriculture. Yeah, no need to water the crops if there's a storm, a rain cloud on the way, right? Yeah, we can take advantages, right? Absolutely. But uh, what do you think about NASA sending people to the moon? Uh, will that benefit Vietnam in any way? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I don't really see uh, that totally, but um, I do believe that it's very beneficial. Uh, not for Vietnam, my country, 
I mean, for human being as well, when we can open our eyes to explore outside, why not? That's a very great opportunity, but very challenge, uh, challenging and very adventurous. <laughs> I mean, I also feel very curious about your project and that kind of project and very excited as well how to know about our earth, our mother nature. <laughs> that's very interesting. And I mean, like unlimited knowledge. So that's why very amazing. Uh, I took a few economics classes whenever I was in college. And one of the concepts that they kind of talked about was uh, opportunity cost. You know, if you do this, right. then you won't be able to do these other things. Right. And that comes up in a lot of my conversations with people about sending people to the moon, is that if you spend the resources to do that, you won't be able to do these other things. And how do we figure out, you know, what we're going to get the best benefit out of uh, in terms of humanity, I mean, does uh, sending people to the moon um, help to make all of us better than some other project that we might do? Uh, what's your thoughts there? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, uh, everything has two sides, as I have said, right? So both sides, we have to sacrifice uh, something to gain other things that even you and me as well in our daily life, uh, I mean, we have to uh, <clears throat> give her something uh, so we can receive her something in the future. That's uh, the truth, the fight up of life. So that's why uh, something we have to challenge ourselves uh, to know more about our future so that's kind of uh, like we have to um, <clears throat> invest and we have to um, like a pay the cost. I mean, the definition you uh, you gave about um, opportunity, opportunity cost. Yeah, it's true. But in the future, you can see uh, what thing, uh, who can go first, who can go uh, for volunteer to explore, to uh, explore, to invent uh, new things for the human, human beings. So that's very important for us, even for the future or next generation. They can have uh, some example, they have um, some lesson. Yeah, <clears throat> that's very interesting. And like um, go peony, very, like uh, <laughs> you have to sacrifice a lot, you have to pay a lot of you know, costs, but um, you you can see that's kind of very meaning, uh, meaningful for our next generation. So even you have to sacrifice themselves as yourself, but that's kind of happiness you can give uh, for our next, uh, next our future um, generation and our uh, future. That's very interesting. And you can see, uh, you can see that a lot of uh, inventions uh, we can find out from uh, space. Yeah, that's um, that can take a lot of uh, cost, but I think yeah, that's worth. We can, uh, we have to invest that. But of course, um, we have to consider, we have to balance because Vietnam, we are very small with small budgets, so we have to balance between other fuel as well. Yeah, so we are not able to uh, to survive if we have uh, we have to invest only uh, researching on space on um, one sector. We have to moderate and balance with uh, everything in life. That's true. That's the most important thing is uh, the balance. Yes. Yes. Now, um, if you think about five hundred years, uh, which is kind of interesting time. A frame for um, myself because, you know, we kind of see the beginning of the um, growth of uh, North America from a European perspective as starting about 500 years ago whenever Christopher Columbus came over from Europe uh, to the U.S. And then, right. you know, uh, pretty much a whole bunch of other Europeans come and other people around the world and you have um, the, the developments here. Um, yeah. So like looking out 500 years in the future, where do you see humanity? Is humanity still just on the earth or have we really expanded beyond the earth and we have people living on the moon, in space, on Mars, on the moons of Jupiter, on the moons of Saturn? Like, what do you think is possible in 500 years? 
oh my god that's um a lot of changes you know uh it's very beneficial for us to open our mindset as well yeah we have to change the mindset from the port and now and the, in the future something uh we are not able to explain right but uh, based on because of uh, science and scientific uh, scientists they uh, can invent and give us um some law or some uh, fact of life so we can explain uh, why this uh, happened in life and why people um stay uh, on the earth not inside earth or something like that yes yeah, that's very amazing um, to explore outside and that's kind of very um giant's uh, invention for us we can change our life and we can like um remain our life uh, people can survive or not depend on you scientists are very yeah i mean we have to make uh, innovation and how to adapt and uh, resilient with a uh, new thing because a lot of changing uh, i mean our earth keep changing day by day with a lot of uh, infections uh, yeah i think that um there is a company here in uh, in um, America called SpaceX. They're making reusable rockets, and they're currently mm -hmm. working on a completely reusable rocket that can be used for point-to-point -point Earth travel. It could carry 100 people from Vietnam to Houston in 40 minutes. Oh. Yeah. So uh, can you imagine what opportunities that would create for export uh, from Vietnam? Being able to take like fresh food, cooked food, um, you know, uh, things that have very uh, short life uh, shelf lives, you would be mm. able to distribute it uh, around <laughs> the world, uh, you know, the same day it was made. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. That's very, I mean, very adventurous. Uh, and curious, for, uh, I mean, you can raise a lot of curiosity. Uh, I have imagined that um, some people are floating without re gravity. Yeah, gravity uh, floating when eating something or washing or brushing your teeth or something like that. <laughs> Amazing how to explore, how to experience that kind of, yeah. So yeah, why not? We, we can do that if we have chance uh, and that's uh, opportunity. Yeah, so because we just have one life and why we can uh, we can try and we can uh, take that action, that's very amazing. And of course, uh, we should uh, do something, I mean, meaningful for our um, human being. So that's very interesting and like uh, happiness in our life. And you know, that's uh, also a rocket. We can put a rocket uh, to explore our, um, I mean, our Earth, Mother Nature, and Universe, very like a huge knowledge outside. Yeah, that's very amazing. Yeah, <laughs> but of course, a lot of money, cost, problem. Yeah, <laughs> that that is true. Uh, though you know, uh, money. Uh, talking about um, uh, the cost of things, a lot of it has to do with scale. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. another great economic concept. Um, this rocket that I'm talking about uh, could actually be used three times per day, and they're building a factory of the, uh, that they hope to be able to make two of them per week. So you would actually literally be able to have thousands of these things flying every single day. You know, I mean, can you imagine like the um, the airport that we have today? Explaining that to somebody a hundred years ago when they see uh, the planes of that time, it it's mm. it, I, I think it. I think it's going to be a really interesting next uh, couple of decades for us. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, we in the part. <clears throat> I I think that they. Sorry, <clears throat> they got uh, a lot of surprise about airplane. How people can fly? <laughs> yeah. How can people uh, go in the like? Uh, how people can go into the moon or some other space or other planets? That's amazing. So, but uh, we can think about that, um, like uh, how scientists can explore outside. If we don't have uh, some like uh, uh, initial uh, project, we can uh, explore and invent new thing. Um, that's uh, we limit our knowledge. Yeah, 
So that's why that's very um, beneficial for us if we can explore, um, we can uh, do some research uh, outside of our planet. I mean, I just thinking there's this uh, airline company in Europe called Ryanair, and they have airline tickets that are nine euros, like oh, nine okay. euros. Very cheap. You know, it's like $12, <laughs> you know, I mean, can you even imagine? <laughs> Being able to make money with uh, uh, that fare. Oh my God. So uh, you, you mean nine yeah, dollars well, for uh, one flight? One flight, yeah. Oh, so very uh, low cost, like that, very low cost. Oh, so that's why we can improve uh, our um, economies. I mean, we can reduce transportation costs. Uh, yeah, and then uh, of course nobody's flying right now. Uh, at least not as much as they used to with this COVID nineteen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, obviously, I say that. And some companies they are in trouble. I mean, bankrupt, right? <laughs> it's it's a challenge. Yeah. Um. So you you said uh, you could imagine like people uh, floating and uh, you know trying to eat and brush their teeth and that type of thing. Um, if it was safe and affordable, uh, would you have any interest in going into space yourself? Hmm. That's kind of very interesting and curiosity for me as well. How people can manage uh, when you're floating or you have to uh, keep balance, <laughs> how to keep uh, balance to eat or to take something from the mall or uh, clothes uh, and put, uh, put on clothes or something like that. How people can manage their activity on the daily routine as well. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Exactly. Yeah, true. Well, uh, Hong, I, I really appreciate the time. Is there anything that you wanted to say that we didn't get a chance to talk about? Okay, thank you so very much about this uh, opportunity you gave me. And um, yeah, I feel very happy and uh, nice talking with you. I don't know how to express my emotion, my feeling right now, but uh, I really hope that in the future, I will have some other chance and better opportunity to talk with you, uh, to share and to gain more knowledge from you as well. And hopefully uh, here we have a lot of students, they are like interested in the field and they really want to talk and uh, interact with you. So uh, thank you very much and please help us uh, more in the future and stay happy, stay blessed and uh, best wishes for you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And you know about your students, I'm interviewing a person a day to the end of 2024. And there's like over, uh, you know, 1300 days left. So oh. if any of your students are willing to talk to me, I would love to talk to them. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much to let me know about that. Yeah, I will inform my student uh, to, to, to wrap this uh, opportunity. Why not? <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Take Same care. to you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.